I love battlers. Look, a month ago, almost no one thought our uh, national soccer team, the Socceroos, would qualify for the World Cup in Qatar in five months' time. But last week, they won a do-or-die game against the UAE, and this morning, they fought to a nil-all draw against Peru, a knockout to decide who'd make the cup, and was down to penalties. Coach Graham Arnold switched his first goalkeeper, Matthew Ryan, for Andrew Redmayne, who was just there as a penalty specialist. But Australia was immediately behind in the penalty shootout until it came down to this kick. Alex Valera. And Redmayne makes the save. It's a save that means the world to Australia. It's a save that means the World Cup for Australia. Joy unbridled for Graham Arnold and René Mullenstein for his players. They are going to the World Cup in Qatar. No one gave them much of a chance, but never, ever write off the Socceroos. So Australia now has an instant hero. A man whose career was well, looked over when he wasn't even picked as first keeper for the Western Sydney Wanderers. Thought it'd have to be a barista in a mate's cafe or maybe go teach or something. Joining me is Mark Bosnich, who I still reckon, despite what we just saw, was Australia's greatest ever goalkeeper. Uh, Mark, great to catch up with you again. How big a result is this for Australian soccer? Uh, good evening to you, Andrew, and thanks for that uh, lovely plaud. It's a massive result. Um, you heard uh, Simon Hill on the commentary saying that not many people gave him a chance. Uh, you said it before. Um, the highlights came on as well. And, and to win that game... Um, in, in such circumstances, being an underdog, it's always a better feeling when you win as an underdog. And in terms of the, the actual football here in Australia, it's been a challenging couple of years, um, as it has for everyone with COVID and so forth. And so we give the game an absolutely massive fillip. And a special word as well must go out to Graham Arnold. Um, he's, he had his critics, including myself, towards the end of the uh, qualifying campaign where they slipped from first down to third, which made them have to go through this playoff route. But to make such a brave decision... Um, to take off arguably your best player, Matt Ryan, and the captain of the team with two minutes to go, specifically for a penalty shootout, really was, um, you know, one of the bravest managerial decisions I've ever seen made um, from an Australian manager, put it that way. It has been done before. The Dutch coach, Louis van Hull, did something very similar back in 2014. Um, but in terms of the saying, who dares wins, well, Graham really encapsulated that with making that substitute, and, and it, uh, he came up trumps. I just wonder, uh, as you say, you've brought on just for the penalty shootout, otherwise he's on the bench. Why are some keepers better than others at penalties? What's he got that uh, the regular keeper doesn't? Well, the, the funny thing is, ironic thing is, when Andrew Redmayne was younger and he played for uh, the old Melbourne City, a team called Melbourne Heart, his penalty-saving record wasn't great. And uh, I, I think he developed with his coach, John Crawley, um, who's also the coach of the Socceroos side, a type of style that, you know, you've seen the dancing and the sort of the, the waving around on there that basically is really suited him. Um, and a lot of it comes down to the mental side. Um, you know, if you, if, you know, winning starts with believing that you can win, just like saving a football. And some goalkeepers are just much more suited to the penalty shootout than others because of that. And also because of the fact that they, they filled the goal up a lot more. Um, but like I said, it was a fantastic sto uh, story. We've discovered a, a new national hero in football. Um, and to, to think to myself, when I came back to this country in 2008, he was a young kid at Central Coast Mariners, a really good young kid. And I'm so, so happy for him. Um, now we're through to the uh, World Cup. We're in the group with France, Denmark and Tunisia. I heard someone say yeah. that was a really tough group. They're all tough. I actually think we probably have a chance here uh, with Tunisia and Denmark can be hot or cold. How do you think we'll go? Well, I think you're pretty spot on there. And after watching this morning, um, you know, not many people around the world gave us a chance this morning, and rightfully so. Peru are 22 in the world, Australia are 42. Um, Tunisia, we've got a real chance, and that will be our second game. The opening game is going to be crucial, as it always is in tournament football, against the reigning champions, France. Uh, that'll be absolutely huge. That At least if we get a decent result in that game, it sets us up for the rest of the tournament. And like you said, Denmark, although they're ranked 11 in the world, excuse me, they are a team that can blow hot and cold, but that will be the, 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 uh, the ultimate game of the group. It's so important. If you look back at 2006, when they went to the knockout stages, they won the first game against Japan. In 2010, 
They got exactly the same amount of points, but they didn't go through, but they got thumped 4-0 by Germany in their opening game. That's going to be absolutely crucial. But like I said, I think Australian football teams are far more comfortable when they're in the underdog uh, situation when no one expects anything and things come up like they did this morning. Well, we don't expect much. I mean, uh, people are saying this is not the team that we had, you know, of the quality, uh, what, the, you know, a few years ago, 10 years ago. But, uh, mate, they're through. And when you're through, exactly. you're still alive and you can still surprise. And as we just saw, a keeper can come from nowhere. Mark Bosnich, it's always a pleasure watching you uh, between the posts uh, and a great to catch up with you again. Thank you so much for your time.